Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed, highly favored, flavored, anointed, and appointed, armed and dangerous, and a danger to the enemy's camp? Hallelujah. That's what we're supposed to be, right? Praise God. Oh, glory, it's a good night to die. <laughs> Yes. You know, the greatest way we can show God that we love him and honor him and respect him, reverence him, is to worship him. Amen? Worship him. And give him the time that is allotted. In other words, when we come together, we give him this time. Amen? Amen? And a lot of people are waiting on God to do something. And you know what he does? He delays because people haven't given him the time. Does everybody get it? You give him the time, he gives you the time. So there's so many people that are waiting on God. But people aren't giving him the time. Or when they come together, they still don't give him the time. They're too busy looking at everything else. See, when we get before the Lord, he may be busy. <laughs> he might be reading his cell phone. He might be reading a book. Oh, hi. Hey. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Remember, you reap what you sow. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was tired. I couldn't make it. See, he may be tired or he was hungry or, you know, whatever excuse that keeps people from fellowshipping. And coming into the presence of God. Never lose sight of this. What you sow is what you reap. In everything. Even time. He knows. He keeps account of everything. Nothing there is not written that isn't being accounted for. Amen? Everything is accounted for. And we are judged and everything we sow Everything. Does everybody get it? Good, we can go on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Again, we are getting deeper and deeper in this time and season right now. Well, all hell is going to break out in all glory. Amen. I love it. <laughs> you must be careful in these times. Great deception is upon the earth right now. Great deception. In Psalm 112, in verse 1, let's speak it. Praise the Lord. Bless is the man who fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments or in his orders, what he speaks. See, if you're not waiting for the Lord to tell you to do something, then you maintain. Amen? You maintain course until he tells you to do something else. If you hadn't heard anything, you maintain. But you must be careful that you don't allow your emotions to speak to you. Or your circumstances to speak to you. Or your lack to speak to you. Or your abundance to speak to you. Or your fears to speak to you. It has to be God. Verse 2, it says, His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be what? Blessed. Blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because there's two types of wealth and riches. There's the wealth and riches of the world and the wealth and riches of the kingdom. 
Verse 4. Unto the upright there arises light in darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is what? Steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established and he will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. In other words, you will see the reward of the wicked. So he says this is an individual where wealth enriches. Now, wealth and riches is also associated with riches and glory. And we are in a time right now where riches and glory, God is releasing. But you step into it. It doesn't come to you, you step into it. See, we're waiting, people are waiting for something to happen when it's already right there and they must step into it. And you step into it into God's presence. You step into it in God's glory. You step into it. And then what happens is he tells us we hear what we're supposed to do. When we fulfill it, he releases the promise. But we cannot be anxious for anything. We must wait on the Lord. We must press into the Lord. We must be able to endure and the more he brings us through these things is the more he wants us to shed our flesh. Remember, he says he delights in the death of his saints. That means that we're to die daily. So in this, it says that the wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness to those who fear the Lord and delights in his orders or commandments. Our descendants will be blessed. If righteousness endures the attacks of darkness, this is how God releases also. How many of y'all know the Lord doesn't attack us? Amen. He doesn't tempt us, but the enemy tempts us. He challenges us. And in this, God is looking for those who maintain the fruit of righteousness. Because if righteousness endures the attacks of darkness, then wealth and riches will come to us in the area when we step in, it's released. We are a time, a time right now where God is trying to bring riches and glory to each and every one of his children. Go to Matthew 13 for a moment. Riches and glory. That's the title. Verse 18, <laughs> riches and glory, Matthew 13, verse 18, Matthew 13, 18, therefore hear the parable of the sower, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the what? Deceitful what? Riches. Choke the word. And he becomes what? Unfruitful. So we see that there are deceitful riches, isn't there? Again, there's the riches of the world and the riches of the kingdom. 
But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Deceitful riches of the world is associated and connected with lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Riches is associated with wealth. Glory is associated with fame. Does everybody understand? In other words, also high honor is glory. So we see here that there's wealth and fame. So do we see that there's wealth and fame of the world and there's wealth and fame of the kingdom? You know, when I met the Lord, I was rich. I was never so rich in my life, and I'm still rich. I'm a gazillionaire. <laughs> I guess you can say a galaxy heir. I don't know. But we are heirs of Christ, which makes us the richest people in the world. Why? Because the things that we know make us rich. It's, it, these are the things that we possess. We are the richest people in the world. And the knowledge and revelation that we have make us rich. Knowing, you know, the mysteries of God make us rich. Think about how many people don't know what you know. Or how many people don't know what you know and they don't know how to get out of what they're in. Been taken captive, bound, tormented. In Romans chapter 2. We are rich in revelation. We are rich in knowledge. We are rich in wisdom. Romans chapter 2. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 1. Riches and glory. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man or woman, whoever you are, who judge, for whatever you judge others, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. A lot of people want everyone to live up to the things of God, but they're not willing to examine themselves. They will never access the riches and glory that God brings them to, that's available to them. Verse 2. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think, O oh man or woman, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the what? Riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Repentance. So he tells us. You know, much of the world doesn't even know what repentance is. Amen. They know in the area, they, they sometimes they forgive someone other or, or they say, excuse me. Or they may say sorrow, but there's sorrow over the world and there's sorrow over the kingdom. Amen. One is a cause us to turn away and the other one, many people get caught and say they're sorry. In verse 5. But in accordance with your hardness and your impudent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish, and every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Ooh. So he says he, 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 he warns those who despise the riches of God's goodness. 
Again, we are talking about riches and glory, wealth of his goodness, his mercy, his forgiveness. Think of how much he puts up with us. Sheesh. <laughs> Romans 11. Romans 11, verse 33. Romans 11, verse 33, let's speak it. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the what? Wisdom and the knowledge of God. These are riches. Much of the world does not have this knowledge. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Powerful. Wealth of his wisdom and knowledge. This is spiritual wealth versus carnal. There is that battle that always comes. It's a battle within us. There's a battle between the eternal and the eternal. And the temporary, it always comes. You have the choice of which one you will take hold of every day, every decision, everything that uh, comes across your path every single day. In Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1, 3. Riches and glory. Now, grab hold of something because we are the only ones in the world that carry the riches and glory of Christ. Amen. We're the only ones. The body of Christ is the only ones. <laughs> Think about that. The world doesn't have the riches and the glory of Christ. We're the only ones that carry it. One of the greatest riches is not only through Christ's sacrifice, salvation, and redemption, and that he rose from the dead, and that we have eternal life, but we look at the connection through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What a riches. The gifts of the Spirit, tongues, what riches we've been granted, connected to the eternal realm. Angels working on our behalf. More than conquerors. Blessed with every spiritual blessing. Seated in heavenly places. The riches and glory of God. And again, not taking this in a nonchalant way. But keeping it active in our life all the time. Of who we are in Christ and who Christ is is in us. Ephesians 1, verse 3, Blessed be the glory, and, uh, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holding without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In other words, to the praise of the glory of his grace. In other words, to the glory of his plan. Amen? In him we, re we have what? Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound to, toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. You know the mysteries are riches. Amen. That in a dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. 
the glory of his fame, of his plan, <laughs> and fame of his plan. Highest levels of honor is the area of his glory. He is the highest level of honor. In Romans 8, riches and glory, we are the carriers as long as we're connected. Romans 8. Heavenly bound, eternal citizens. So when stuff happens, remember, this isn't your home. It just doesn't stink and matter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 8, that's why Paul said, look, I don't care what's going on. I, I, my whole concern is Christ crucified and his resurrection. Everything to him was about the resurrection. Resurrection power. What a mystery. What riches. Rome, uh, Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the what? Suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where? In us. Hallelujah. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Hallelujah. It's like a cocoon that became a butterfly. For the creation was subjected to fertility not only willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Wow. You know, we can read this over and over, and it still excites me every time. It just baffles me that all creation is going to be turned over to us, who were morons at one time. <laughs> Come on. We are out there, man. <laughs> we couldn't be responsible for nothing. Let's be disciplined for anything. Could never fulfill anything quitted everything, ran from everything, and accused everyone else for the problem. <laughs> Praise God. But today in Christ Jesus, because of his riches and glory, <laughs> we can be responsible, accountable, trustworthy. Amen? Faithful stewards. Because we are part of a royal family. Not the Queen of England. They're all heathens. <laughs> They're lost. Their wealth is wicked. Their riches are wicked. Their glory is shame. They have none. The only glory they have is associated with self. Same thing in all of these goofy religions. We got a pope that they glorify, call him majesty. You talk about an upside down world. It's crazy. You'd think he would stand up if he knew God and say, look at man, this has got to stop. You guys can't, you got to stop calling me majesty. There's only one. Because he doesn't know God. All a farce, all a fake. Oh, snap. All right, let's continue on. <laughs> is everybody okay? Verse, uh, what is it, 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Wow. See, that is a mystery. We're getting a new body. 
For we were saved in this hope, but the hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But we hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait with it for, with perseverance. In other words, we have endurance no matter what's going on. We're hard-pressed on every side. You know, the word talks about the glory of man, which is an abomination to God. But the glory within us brings glory to his name. 2 Corinthians 3. Riches and glory. Second Corinthians three, verse twelve. Is everybody there? Therefore, we, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day that same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. What a mystery. Think about that. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. That's why we got to have the Holy Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we are being what? Transformed into the same image from glory to glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We are changed from glory to glory, well, into His glory. Amen? Amen. In other words, the word talked about uh, Jesus learned obedience by suffering. So sometimes our glory is associated with the trials and tribulations that we're going through so that we become vessels of honor in everything that we're going through. Every trial brings you into another transition and, tra and change to become more like him. If you respond according to his image, likeness, and character, that's what changes us. But when you react to the old man, then you allow the old man to take that place. Does everybody understand this? I want to say this again because this is that got to be imparted. When we are challenged, tempted, found in trials and tribulations, if we react, remember Christ is to have first place. If we react according to the old man, there's an exchange. If we respond to the character of Christ, we gain more. We change into his image more. So we are, that's why it says, count it all joy when you fall into what? Trials and <clears throat> tribulations and so forth. Why are you going to count it all joy? Because you get an opportunity to change. You get an opportunity to be transformed into his image again. More, more, and more. But see, most people count their trials and tribulations as, woe is me. How many only one it happens to? It doesn't matter what's going on. I don't care if you get in an accident, if something happens, even if it's somebody else's fault, you're still involved in that trial or tribulation. Amen? It's what you do. It's whether you respond or react, whether it brings out Christ's character and brings more of his glory and riches or brings the old man, which steals Christ's glory and riches from us. Does everybody understand? So we're either gaining and adding or we're losing it. Remember, the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And of course, what comes out of your mouth is going to be written. Hallelujah. Everybody all right? So again, learning obedience through suffering brings the glory to God and brings 
the glory of Christ. That's why you must be careful to wait. Everybody goes through stuff. Amen? If you're not going through stuff, I got stuff you can go through. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the purpose of going through it, thank God we're going through it. Amen? Amen. But you must hold back you react. In other words, don't go in the flesh. And you wait. You wait. You wait. You hide. You go into secret place. You go get your blankie and put it over your head. Whatever you got to do, go into your room and shut the door and lock it until you know what to do, until Christ's character comes back. See, because when you're going through the stuff, sometimes it's hard to hear. Amen? Sometimes, sometimes. Man, then you wait. You wait. What does it say? Those who wait in the Lord shall be what? They'll be renew their what? Strength. Amen. Other than that, if you don't wake, you know what happens? You get weaker. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3. Remember, we are the carriers of the riches and glory of God. We are the carriers of the mysteries of God. We know the eternal. We are blessed every spiritual blessing seated in every place as joint heirs of Christ. Ephesians 3, verse 8. And there is no buts about it. Amen. Remember, we're the head, not the tail. This is not butt ministry. Verse 8, let's speak it. To me who am aim, aimless than the least of all saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the what? Unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the who? Who's the church? We are. That's the riches and glory. To the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. And whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Praise God. Let's go on. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose what? Heart at my tribulations for which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the what? Inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be what? Able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think, According to the power that works in us, the power that works in us, the power that works in us, the glory that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Riches of his glory. 1 Corinthians 2. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2.
Is everybody okay? In verse 1. Let's speak it together. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with ex excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except what? Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. I love that part. The wisdom and the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Nothing. But we speak the wisdom of what? In God, in the mysteries. The hidden wisdom. Is that riches? Yeah. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for whose glory? Our glory. Now remember, it's, it's his glory in us. Does everybody get it? That's our glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So does it important to be connected? How are you going to get the riches and glory? Oh, happy days. Again, these mysteries are the riches of God. You know, when he was talking to disciples, he said, it's been granted to you to know the mysteries of God. It's been granted to me and you to know the mysteries of God. These are the riches of God. I'm telling you, after I got saved, I, I was so, I, I never felt so rich in my life. And it wasn't about anything of materialism. It was what I knew. What I knew, who I met. Wow. What, what riches. <laughs> Nothing could fulfill or satisfy to know God in his presence. To know Christ crucified. To know the price that he paid. And to know who we are. See, if you don't know who you are, then you don't know who he is. Praise God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 4. Yeah, I went further than I was supposed to, but that's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Glory. In verse something. Is everybody there? What verse are you at then? I want to know what something verse is. One? Okay, that's it then. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. Let a man so consider us as servants to Christ. Now, a servant to Christ is a servant to the anointing. So we are servants to the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. The anointing does not serve us. We serve the anointing. Amen. And stewards of the mysteries of God, which is the riches of God. We are stewards. So we carry the riches and the glory of Christ, each and every one of us. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. Faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Why? Because he's got a relationship. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from the Lord. We are stewards to the anointing, I mean servants to the anointing and stewards to the mysteries or the riches of God. Proverbs 4.
in verse 1. Let's speak it. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. Now, wait a minute. Wisdom does what? Tells us what to do. Understanding tells us how to do it. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, and do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. Whoa, that's glory. She will bring you honor, that's glory, when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be what? Many. Many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Wow. Now, he's, these are the attributes of the Holy Spirit. One of them is divine wisdom. Amen? Wisdom from God is riches. It's riches. 2 Timothy 2. Riches and glory. Which is actually wealth and honor, or what we call wealth and fame, but it's actually honor. And we carry the fear of the Lord. So we honor him. It isn't a halo over somebody's head. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleansing, cleanses himself from the latter sins, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, he will be a vessel of what? Remember, vessels of honor carry the riches and glory of Christ. He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, set apart, Useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youth, youthful lusts, but pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. In other words, be careful who you associate with. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing they generate what? Strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patience. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition of God, perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Wow. So we are carriers of the riches and glory. God wants us to be vessels of honor to express his character and glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 15. Simple teaching. First Corinthians 15. We are rich. We are wealthy. We are the richest people in the world. We don't fear death because we can't die. That's riches. <laughs> Your physical body may kaput, but you live forever. Does everybody get this? Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to live forever. As long as you behave. <laughs> you must follow him all the way home. Amen. 
Praise God. 1 Corinthians 15, 40. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Is everybody there? There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star is different from another star in glory. So also in the resurrection of the dead, the body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. What a mystery. What riches. To know you don't have to, soon you don't have to put up those stupid thoughts. And all these goofy things that run by your mind. And Anyways, I won't go any further than that. <laughs> Verse 43. So it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last man, Adam, became a what? Life-giving spirit. What a mystery. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Let me tell you, you tell that to the world out there, they're going to think you're bonkers. Because they can't comprehend the riches of Christ. Amen? This is glory. This is honor. This is phenomenal. Just to know this stuff is phenomenal. 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you, a mystery, one of the riches. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump it. <laughs> For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Listen, I want to tell you something. The White House watched a movie about abortion today. It affected them all. They're going to do everything they can to stop abortion. Laws are going to change. Wade and whatever is going to get thrown out. It's going to come to pass. It's already been prophesied. But they watched it today. They said they, they screened it today in the White House, and it affected them all. Snap. Daddy's coming soon. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Woohoo! So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, consistent, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Keep alert, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Consistency, discipline, staying connected. Remember, every time you respond to Christ's character, it gives him another place. Every time you respond to the old man, offspring of the Satan, we lose that place. Amen? Praise God. Riches and glory. We are the carriers. Vessels of honor. The world is looking for he who's in you. 
Amen? The world is looking. So let's express them and bring glory and honor to his name. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace of every time we've reacted according to the old and not responded according to the new. So let the riches and the glory of Christ continue to abound abundantly in us and through us, keeping us thirsty and hungry for your presence, for your glory, for your love, and for your purpose. In Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.